So we're back in Anime NYC, and I went this year with some big hopes to try and top myself from last year, and I didn't do that at all. Oh, no, I don't have focus. Sweet. This is going to be one f trip. This year was actually pretty great. I actually got to talk to a lot of great cosplayers and artists from the whole convention, and everyone I spoke to was genuinely just a real pleasure to me, and I got to thank everyone already for the time that they gave me to actually speak and film all of their work. And one of the first things I noticed when I got there this year was that the line setup was a lot better from last year's. With the removal of the health screening process from last year, it was actually a lot easier to not cross the street and get inside. It was all just wrapped around the building. And while the line was really large outside and intimidating at first, it actually went by pretty quickly. It's still really impressive to see the full scale size of the convention from the top floor and just see all the people that arrived. Even with the size of the Javits Center, it's still a real squeeze sometimes to get through some of these hallways, especially for some of the more packed events. What I actually found out this year was that they have a designated app that actually lists all of the events that are happening. So if you wanted to base your day around their itinerary, you could definitely do that and make your day a lot more plentiful. One of the events I was too late to get a reservation for was the new panty and stocking panel. Unfortunately, those tickets sold out within the hour because you have to make a reservation with your badge. And that might be one of the hard things about this convention is just how quickly some of the larger events and the tickets themselves can sell out. Tickets can sell out rather quickly and some of the prices for the Anime NYC Plus badge can be a little harder for other people to swallow. And speaking of hard to swallow, a lot of the food and drink prices are always outrageous in conventions like this, but even if you do muster up the money to buy food and drink here, finding a spot to actually sit down and enjoy it is also a little tricky. All the spots are usually taken and you'll probably end up sitting along the wall or in some corner. I remember a particular area that had a bunch of tables so you could sit down and enjoy your stuff, but there was a DJ blasting music right beside it, so it felt like it kind of made the whole spot a little uncomfortable if you wanted to talk to friends or just relax. One of the other things I took a particular note of this year was some of the artists were saying that they had a preference for cash because the price to get Wi-Fi to get functioning card readers was outrageously high. And speaking of Wi-Fi, it can also be incredibly hard to get signal in the building. You can find some nice areas that say you have service, but it's actually incredibly difficult to get it to work. So while I'm not sure that these are things that can be fixed, it's stuff that I think that people should be aware of when they go to the convention. Aside from all that stuff, there was still a great number of things that made a return from last year, like the Japanese media import booth. It was pretty nice to see that they say what consoles are locked and how to unlock them, and they even sell you unlocked consoles there just in case. You got your pretty standard fare of booths that sell weapons, props, plushes, toys, figurines, so on and such. And I actually saw a cosplay wig and workshop area. So if you needed a last minute piece or were just looking to get something that you needed for a future cosplay, you could find it here. I also found it interesting that some of the main concerts took place at the very front of the entrance. It's the same as it was last year, but it's still pretty interesting that most of the VTuber concerts take place right at the very front where everyone's walking in. While it's easier to see, it can sometimes be a hassle to get through the huge crowds that can get there at specific hours. And the area where I definitely spent most of my time was Artist Alley. There were so many great people and so many amazing prints from a plethora of styles that any specific style that you're looking for, you're going to find here. It was actually pretty overwhelming because there were points when me and my friends wanted to go back to find a specific artist, but because there were so many rows and aisles and it went on for such a long stretch, it actually became kind of tricky to find the specific artist we were looking for, but we were never disappointed going down any aisle. It was always just such a treat. I think one of the most unusual things I never took note of was actually transporting prints home. I actually bought a print and I had no way to bring it back home without destroying it, so I actually had to go out and buy a tube to make sure that I got it home safely without putting any dents or creases in it. So if you do plan on buying any prints, definitely make sure you have a way to house them safely upon your return home. And I have to give all the attention to the cosplayers, because they truly make up half of the event. There is always just so much creativity, charm, style, and pure heart when it comes to all these costumes. And that's one of the nice things, is that even though this is an anime-focused convention, there is a complete variety in the cosplays that I get to see at this event. So one minute I'll see Doro Hidoro, or I'll see Warden from Super Jail, or Rapper Pikmin. I never know what's going to be around the corner, and I just love to see the creativity that people always put into their costumes. 
Well, that's Anime NYC 2023. I did hear people say that they were impressed that this was an improvement from last year's convention, and I'm very curious to see with next year's taking place in August and them taking up more floor space, what changes are going to happen in the future for the convention. But I gotta say thank you all again so much for your time at the convention for letting me take photos and videos, and I hope to see you all next year.